Hello everyone, this is Fred Holmes at the Frederick Holmes & Company Gallery here in Seattle. I thought I'd uh, take a few moments and give you a brief tour of the gallery. Um, during this period when we're all self-isolating and um, can't really travel and I'm, I'm missing a lot of you for obvious reasons, um, I thought I'd just give you a quick tour and let you see what's been happening here in the gallery. If you haven't been in the gallery in the last several months, there have been a lot of uh, really new and interesting developments. So. Let's start. These are a couple of um, the newer Rolf Scarlet gouaches that I've gotten in. These were um, premiered during the 20th Century on Paper show, which was a summer show that I did in collaboration with the other galleries that um, we put together, the Seattle Deconstructed Art Fair, since the actual Seattle Art Fair wasn't taking place. Quick scan around here. Let's see, what do we have? Yes, well, there's Jane Burton's monumental sculpture, of course. But down here in the corner is a new piece that just came in. This is only about four feet high. It's a beautiful little work. On the wall, we have Betsy Podlack. Many of you uh, probably saw the announcement of the show, maybe saw the video online on the gallery's website. Betsy, of course, is a very well-established painter out of New York. Um, she has quite a following, has been critically praised for her paintings, which have a distinctive kind of look to them almost Matisse-like in many respects. On the wall, we also have Kim Bruce, Kim Hennigman, <laughs> excuse me, Hen Kim Hennigman Bruce's sculptures. A Couple of newer pieces that have come in. People love her work. I mean, if, if people haven't, um, when people walk in and they haven't seen her work before, they're just always amused and mesmerized. And of course, you know, we sell quite a bit of it. This is pretty much our only gallery in the United States, and I'm very pleased to keep it that way, actually. Although I, I'm sure that Kim probably feels differently. Um, over here is uh, one of the gallery's newest artists. This is David Gott's sculpture. Now, David, of course, um, I don't know if you have, any of you have seen the um, introduction on the gallery's website also, but David was an apprentice to the very prominent internationally renowned sculptor uh, Julie Spidell until she retired at the end of 2019. He was with her for about 10 years as her fabricator and apprentice. So he struck out on his own earlier this year. And um, I was introduced to his work through a mutual friend of mine in the arts. We've known each other since the 80s from the Bay Area and she turned me on to um, David's work because she was working as an unofficial art advisor at the um, Ruston Point development in Tacoma and had selected one of his monumental works for a public placement. Interesting, huh? Uh, of course, we have Walter Quirt. This is always such a privilege to present Walter's work. There's uh, several new pieces that I've gotten in. Drawings, acrylics on paper, I've got a fabulous acrylic, excuse me, a fabulous oil on canvas from 1951 coming in probably somewhere around the end of this month or the beginning of December. It's a vintage piece, it's a museum piece. Of course, this is Grand Pose from 1958. On the adjacent wall is uh, Robert McNown. Now, Robert, of course, is a new addition to the gallery, is one of the gallery's newest abstract painters, but Robert is not unknown in the Seattle um, arts community. Robert was with the very prominent, very well-regarded uh, gallery, Frances Cedars, for well over 20 years, and she gave um, Robert uh, num numerous solo shows. People who saw his work then and seen his work now frequently comment that um, how much it's changed and actually has grown. Uh, and I have to agree, having seen some of the earlier work as well, it really has grown. I mean, Robert has a really unusual quality um, with his work. Some more of the Rolf Scarlets, the gouaches from the 1940s, 1950s. I have some unframed pieces also that are from as far back as the 1930s that I'll be happy to show you if you're interested. Ooh, what's that behind the counter, Fred? Well, I don't know. Why don't we take a look? All right, let's. This is a um, 
This is an etching from 1963 by Salvador Dali. It's called Pegasus. And this is one of the, probably one of the more highly regarded etchings that he did that were part of the collaboration with him and his publisher, Pierre Argelet. That's why this entire collection that I have is known as the Argelet Collection. Gorgeous work, gorgeous etching work. I mean, etching was really his forte, as I often say. I'm gonna swing back around here. Try to avoid whiplash. This, of course, is one of the gallery's newest art stars also. This is Phil Manadale. Uh, many of you have seen Philman's work and fallen in love with it. And, and I'm very grateful to you because many of you have bought Philman's work. This is one of the newer pieces that came in just oh, maybe about three weeks ago. This is called um, Shared Silence. A little bit different palette for, for Philman, you know, but Philman is a 30 year old painter. He's still very much kind of maturing. And I just find everything that he does is just incredible. This is another painting that he did called um, The Innocent. Let's go over here. This is another sculpture by um, David Gott. This is a wood and bronze sculpture. This is called um, what is this called, Fred? <laughs> this is called a pose. And uh, it's made with a very rare kind of rosewood called bubinga. And it has a strip of um, bronze running through it. On the wall is, um, are the paintings of Derek David Barron. Now Derek is again one of the newer painters that we've introduced to the gallery. Like I turned on to Derek's work through a mutual artist that um, I also show, who met Derek in Texas and uh, was really complimentary of his work, so I decided to check him out and found I liked his work too, a lot. <clears throat> Derek incorporates, of course, a lot of drawing into his abstract paintings and multiple layers of color and tone. Uh, this is a great painting that I just had to have. This is called, um, I'd rather be sitting and drinking coffee in Paris. And you know, like <laughs> these days, who wouldn't rather be sitting and drinking coffee in Paris, right? There's another sculpture by David Gott. You, you can really see how he was used to working on a monumental scale because this is one of those sculptures that if this were enlarged to maybe about a 12 foot height or so, and with public commission obviously, or even a private commission for that matter, would just be stunning, absolutely stunning. More of Derek's work. The coffee cups, of course, are one of his iconic symbols that he uses. Um, kind of part of his visual vocabulary, as we often say. Coffee is not only one of his favorite drinks, but it's also kind of, um, it's symbolic and, and more metaphorical, I suppose, of, of community, of coming together. Another one of Derek's paintings. I love this contrast of black and what you can't really see is that it's not entirely black there's actually shades of black in there and and charcoal and so forth this is one of my favorites this has really grown on me this is simply a called untitled it has no title but i just really love the what he did with this painting it's um the contrast between the field that we see here and kind of this beige or creamy color and this scratches into the canvas that he's done the way it's painted um with these kind of almost um, bold, wide strokes and lines. And then of course, contra contrasted with the, um, the reds and the burgundies down here and the kind of the writing, the automatic writing. Couple of other, a uh, couple more, excuse me, of uh, David's work, Derek's work. This is called the Zamboni. Again, just kind of very whimsical. Um, there's almost like a very childlike quality to his work. I mean, a real sense of joy that um, belies the seriousness of a lot of abstract work. I'm an alligator. I was amused recently when I was watching a, a documentary on David Bowie and um, for those of you that remember rock and roll back in the day in the 70s, you know, Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars. I'm an alligator, I'm a mama, papa coming for you. 
I don't know if that was what was relevant to Derek's thinking when he painted this, but I don't know, seemed fitting. Anyway, so um, I just want to say thank you all very much for being fans of the gallery, being friends of the gallery, being collectors of the gallery. You all mean a lot to me. And I'm sorry that during this period, we don't get to see each other as often as we'd like. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this tour of the gallery and some of the newer artists and some of the newer works that I've been featuring. Um, this is just the ground floor too. And I just want to offer um, um, something else and that um, in just, in much the same way as I'm doing this video here, it's very easy uh, if you wish, if you want to see something specific for me to be able, and not even just, not only the things that I have on the wall right now, but anything that I have in the gallery really, to be able to uh, just give me a call and um, I can set up a video chat with you on either, you know, FaceTime if you have an iPhone or uh, Instant Messenger on Facebook, um, they do video, and, or, or Skype for that matter. In this era, of course, of uh, COVID limited communications, we'll say, um, you know, everything is Zoom, everything is video, everything is online, and uh, everything is digital. So. Uh, I'm simply succumbing to the inevitable here. Um, so that really pretty much concludes the tour. Thank you all again very much for being strong supporters of the gallery. I do appreciate it and I can always use more of it, believe me, these are tough times. Um, and I also just wanna say, you know, stay safe. We're a long way from being out of this, this virus. And um, I hope you're all masking. I hope you're all being responsible about social distancing and and I completely understand, you know, um, any precautions that you're taking, and I'm happy to comply with anything that you feel you need to uh, make an art purchase or even just to see art. I understand the need sometimes just to see art and at a time when um, things can, some, can sometimes feel a little grim. Um, I'm very fortunate in that I can walk into my gallery and put on some music and be surrounded by the artwork that I love. So again, Thank you all very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.